These are five things that you shouldn't do when buying property from a mortgage broker with over 15 years of experience. Number one, never buy property with either friends, family, business partners, or colleagues. This is a number one no-no. Family member except your spouse is okay, but brother, sister, uncle, auntie, your colleagues, <laughs> don't do that. Friends, no, no. Business partners, obviously no. Now, this is over 15 years of doing thousands and thousands of loans, and anyone who has purchased a property with those four categories always ends up destroying the relationship. Common ones are like brothers and sisters. For example, brother, brother, sister, sister, or brother, sister. And it's usually the case is, you know, they don't have enough deposit, and over this side has not enough income. So, wow, why don't we join forces and buy this property together? The only bad thing is these guys don't think ahead. Right now, they're single. But when you guys have your own family, you have your own partner, your partner will start whispering in your ear, your other sibling's partner will start whispering in their ear. One wants to sell, one doesn't want to sell. One wants to cash out for something else, one doesn't want you to cash out for another reason. I mean, in this year, I've already done like 15 refinances due to family, partnership, sibling breakups. Number two, similar to number one, is getting someone else to buy the property, but you're giving the deposit, but your name is on it. For example, you have someone here who can't get a loan at this stage due to servicing, but they have another person here who has the income to do the servicing, but doesn't have the deposit. Usually they're family members. So this person will give them the deposit, they get the property, and this person will make the mortgage repayments. Now, down five to 10 years track, this person wants to release equity to do something. But the bank goes, nope, I don't care what you're paying repayments here. This property doesn't belong to you. It belongs to this person. And what happens is this person has to transfer the name to this person and incur stamp duty. Number three, similar to one and two, is buying a property as a family and having this expectation that everyone lives under the same roof. What happens here, you have a patriarch of the family who involves other members of the family to join forces to buy one property and all live under the same roof. So the husband and wife is here with the kids and then, you know, the mum and dad of the husband is here. And most occasions, this is a nightmare and a formula for divorce because the in-laws never get along with, you know, the other party. There's no sense, no independence, and usually it ends up in refinancing to get the other party out. Number four, overcapitalizing on renovations and structural changes to your home. For example, the home is a million dollars and then the people chuck about $800,000 worth of capital work on this property. This extra money doesn't mean your property is worth 1.8 million. And number five is when you're cashing out equity from your property to buy random shit. Like number four, where you're overcapitalizing on your existing property, uh, some people cash out equity from their property. For example, they've got about say 800K of equity. They cash it out. They go buy a boat, buy a car, or any uh, depreciable assets that have no growth, where you should be you know, cashing out equity to buy you know, more investment properties or shares or anything that has growth value. Buying a boat, buying a car for personal reasons is not tax deductible. But when you're buying shares, property, those costs are tax deductible. Those are my five. What do you think? Jump in the comments. I'd like to read them.